What is up, my friend? If you're watching this video, you're probably someone who wants to get into reading or someone who wants to like books more but hasn't quite fallen in love with them yet. And that's perfectly fine. Reading is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself, but it is admittedly hard to get started. It probably took me 20 years to actually become a reader myself. And that's because, in my opinion, in order to fall in love with reading truly, you have to understand why. Why do we read books? Everyone does have their own reason, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my specific reason because I feel like my personal why isn't just particular to me, but it's probably common, if not universal for everyone, really. So why do we read books? Well, we read books to deal with the problem of pain. Bear with me for 20 seconds as I get philosophical here. Life is hard. It's filled with suffering. However, books go ahead and help us deal with the suffering. Let's use my life as an example. At 20 years old, I was miserable. I believe my life didn't matter. I had existential dread. I felt like all of my pain and suffering was uh, pointless. In a moment of desperation, I ended up sharing uh, these feelings with one of my college professors at the time. And he gave me the sort of, at the time, unorthodox advice of, hey, you should read some books. This was coming from a computer science professor, by the way, as I was studying computer science originally in, in college. And I say that to say, that this advice certainly sounded nonsensical to a computer science major who hadn't really enjoyed books throughout his life as it was. But you know, I sort of shrugged it off and listened to him anyways because, you know, what else did I have to lose at this point, right? I, I slugged my way through a couple of books and it was really arduous, but I kept at it sort of one, because I was still desperate and two, I had a lot of pride like, you know what, I'm not gonna let books defeat me. I'm gonna show this professor that I can read these books, right? So I carried on and then eventually, finally, I came across this one book called The Count of Monte Cristo, and oh, what a book that is. It's an incredibly long, but honestly powerfully written and riveting story, dealing with these grandiose themes about revenge, redemption, pain, loss and suffering, love and hatred, really almost the all the extremes of the, the passions that encompass the human psyche. Above all else, it's a book that showcases how even the most lowly and down and out members of society, such as our young protagonist, Edmond Dantes, can still overcome the burdens and sufferings of their life, even the unjust sufferings, if they simply are able to discern a sort of North Star and reach their potential. But the bottom line for me was reading Monte Cristo, it was the first time in my life where I found writing that spoke to my, my soul and my spirit. Something that, that spoke and awoke something inside of me that I didn't know could be awoken. And whatever it was that I sort of discerned wake up inside of me, it felt like an answer to the pain that I was carrying. Almost like, uh, yes, there's a certain truth that you discovered in this book here. And if you discover and follow and pursue this truth, this will make all of the pain you're carrying worthwhile. And I share that anecdote to essentially highlight this, that even just reading one book, the right book has the, the capacity to completely transform your life for the better and change the entirety of your life's course. But now we're gonna get into the meat of this video because really beneath that transformation, I wanna get out to, well, what is it that happened? How do books actually transform you? First off, books give us wisdom. Wisdom is a commonplace word, but honestly, it's rarely talked about. Frankly, I believe that we're thoroughly lacking in wisdom in society today. Yes, many of us are highly educated, but I think few of us are truly, genuinely wise. Universities give us an education, but not really wisdom. Instead of studying what it means to be human, we're instead uh, going to college to either pursue trades or we take these humanities classes that more often than not teach us how to be activists rather than free and independent thinkers. In short, we don't really have any institutions or educational systems that really genuinely teach us about our humanity, in my opinion. We're no longer seeking wisdom. And this is tragic because books are really a great, if not maybe the ultimate source of wisdom. Great books are great because they are a source of universal entertainment that really transcends times and place and generation and really cuts to the, the deep core universals of what makes us human. And what we're reading in books, we're essentially engaging in a conversation with some of the greatest thinkers that humanity has ever produced. For instance, Shakespeare's corpus is essentially a journey through the entirety of the human psyche, dealing with the highs and lows of existence, rises and falls in socio-political power dynamics, dealing with love and hatred, love or lust, camaraderie or betrayal, and so on and so forth. And all of these grandiose themes are things that exist in everyday man. You see dramatizations of heroes and villains, and you begin to learn and ask yourself, well, what does it mean to be heroic? And what does it mean to be a villain? Really an enhanced sense of understanding morality. And ultimately, embedded in the corpus of all of this writing is wisdom. And wisdom breeds virtue. And this brings us to our second point of how books transform us. Reading books grants us self-knowledge. The greatest commandment ever given to mankind was the first Delphic maxim that was inscribed on the forecourt of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. And that maxim was, 
know thyself. See, self-knowledge often breeds beauty and peace into your life. The paradox, however, is that self-knowledge is ultimately internal. It's not something that we can grasp from the outside material world. To really know ourselves, we have to understand our interior lives. Of course, this sounds easy enough since we're with ourselves all day, every day, wherever we go, so who would better know us than us? But to really actually understand our interior spiritual lives, that's really much more of a discipline. It takes work and practice. For instance, just consider how hard it is to actually try to sit and meditate for 10 minutes. Books, however, are a fantastic portal and practice to really begin understanding and cultivating us an understanding of your interior spiritual life, you could say. Whether you're reading fiction or nonfiction, uh, you're, it really teaches you empathy and understanding of others. We better discern a universality to our humanity, the sort of interconnectedness we all share with one another, and also how all of us are interconnected with something greater than just ourselves. In short, we begin to humanize each other better and also begin to recognize and reconcile our connection to a transcendent source of really what life is. And cliche as it sounds, it's really the self-knowledge that leads to that notion of unconditional love, of trying to love thy neighbor as thyself. And this brings me to the third point of how books transform us here. And the third point is that reading gives you a voice. The most beautiful experience that comes from reading, especially when you're reading the great writers in classical literature, is whenever you're reading something that essentially articulates a truth that you have felt but never been able to give words to. This is essentially when you discover truth, when you're led closer to the truth of your own life, if not the truth of the world around you. And the more that you begin to discover these truths that uh, resonate with your own soul and spirit, the more you begin to actually discover and cultivate your own genuine voice. And within your own voice is your genuine identity and character. It's strength and freedom. Cliche as the saying is, you essentially learn how to speak truth to power, finding something genuine, true, and everlasting to stand for, believe in, and fight for. And once you find something worth fighting for and striving for and believing in, especially when it's something greater than yourself, that is the only tried and true way I've found of really making your life worthwhile and meaning. And ultimately, I believe there's no better way to find the beauty of your own life than through a consistent engagement with books. And so now to essentially summarize this, this process of transformation through books, reading grants you wisdom and self-knowledge of both yourself and mankind around you. And through your pursuit of truth, you're able to discern and discover your own voice. The more you gain knowledge of self and the more clearly you articulate your own voice, the more you transform into the person you are meant to become thereby living a richer and more meaningful life. It's ultimately realizing the beauty of this process that enabled me to fall in love with reading. And I genuinely hope that it may do the same for you, my friend. And I do appreciate you listening as always. And by the way, if you're new here, and maybe you're like me and you're tired of nihilism and you actually have the courage to believe in something greater than yourself, something to fight for, then you may like this channel. Because on this channel, we talk about books, philosophy, and what it means to live a beautiful life. Ultimately believing that life's adventure is found through the pursuit of truth, beauty, and goodness. And if that is something that you might be interested in, then I would absolutely encourage you to like and maybe leave a nice comment if there was something you found in this video. And of course, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to see videos similar to this one. And as always, I hope you have a blessed rest of your day, my friend. Take care.